Welcome everyone to Keep Your Torch Lit Podcast. My name is Sam. My name, name is, is Chad. Sarah. Well, I was only sure. <laughs> little shake first, but <laughs> my name is Sarah. <laughs> and my name is Jack. So Pinky promised to all through to all three of us, we're all gonna go to the final three when we play a Survivor Michigan again, right? Right. Heck yeah. I Heck never yeah. break a pinky promise. Never break a pinky promise. Never. You can never break a pinky promise. Uh, we'll see about that. <laughs> no, it's, pinky promises are unbreakable in Survivor. I, they've never failed. You do a pinky promise, and it's 100% of the time, that's it's going to get the person voted off that you agreed to, right? Yeah, it's like a blood bond. Like, if you even think about going back on the pinky promise, I think your pinky falls off. Is that what yeah. that means? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your pinky falls off. Mm -hmm. You have to cut it off. And I still have all my fingers. I still exactly. have my fingers. Exactly. You know, there's there's someone that might be uh, might be missing a finger that we might have to check in with later, though. <laughs> you might have had some broken some broken pinky promises. Wait, actually, Yikes. that's funny. I just remember that me and Abby made a pinky promise in season two that we would like never vote each other off, and I think I did break that. So oh, I think so I did already. How I think many I fingers do you have, Sam? Can we see? Uh, def definitely have all ten. Ah! Okay, but I saw TikTok today of them putting like a fake finger on and it looked really real, so oh, those might be fake. That would have been perfect. I should have got that. Would have been a perfect gag for the you know the ten people that watch these videos on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> but what an episode of Survivor Michigan. We fought, Tokidoki Six finally breaks up. How how did that feel watching that from the jury, Jack? Oh, it was it was beautiful. Like that was our little drinking game. Was every time they mentioned that, you know, I we didn't think it was going to happen. So I was I was definitely that was the biggest blindside so far as me, as a juror watching this. You know, actually seeing them turn it all on each other. Oh, it was do you think that like do you think that Nate was just a goner at the time? Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, oh, Nate didn't win. Nate, the puzzler didn't win. There wasn't the puzzle apparently. So okay, yeah, bye, Nate. But hey, you know what? Nate's a far better supplier, survivor player than me, I guess. Like he's already at least tied me. So, you know, it's true. He didn't ever. Um, are you glad that he didn't send you a text talking about how like, wow, I'm so glad I'm in the game still and you're not. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. But would, would that have oh, lost man. your jury vote? Yeah. I mean, we'll have to see if I if he does still have my jury vote right now. If he if he makes it to the yeah. end, you might will I vote for even though we've battled a lot, will I vote for my El Norte brethren? We'll we'll have to see. We will have to see. Um Yeah, I guess getting into this episode. So it always started off with like that like movie about the paranoid lion. That was so <laughs> funny. Sarah, Sarah, I think you're muted. I was just saying, I love that. I thought that was so cool. I loved all the little bits. There's like the Shannon cooking show. Mm -hmm. Like the, yeah, I thought, I thought that was really creative. Yeah. I love the little black and white. Yeah. I was invested in the plot line. Invested in the plot. The paranoid lion. Are you going to give an Oscar out for the paranoid lion? Yeah, I think it's like between the para. I, isn't the paranoid lion like the supporting actor? I thought the the main actor was Dale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said he thinks he's deserving <laughs> of an Oscar for the main role. I guess Matthew would be the supporting actor. He's he's like exactly. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so funny. Yeah, like so. What do you guys? So what do you guys think about that whole plan Toki Doki came up with to like basically? completely fuck with Matthew to get him to play an idol. I mean, I'm very down to fuck with Matthew. I think that I think that was great. <laughs> I think it was smart on Dale's part because it, like the more he pushes for it, the less people think that he has it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was definitely smart for him. And like on the off chance that there were still three idols in the game and that he did have the last idol, then just being able to secure Dale as like himself only having like the only two idols in the game. I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's just pretty smart on his part. Exactly. The other people, I I feel like they were just going with the hive mind, maybe. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they really thought he had it, because honestly, I feel like nobody really knows who has it right now. Yeah. Yeah. 
it's fun. It's funny that like Nate. I think there's a line where like someone's like where Nate thought that Dale had the idol. Or I was telling Jackson like, yeah, like Nate thinks that Dale has idol, and Jackson's like, how would Nate know that? <laughs> and, like Jackson's like, Dale doesn't have the idol. What are you talking about? Like Nate's an, Nate's an idiot. Ugh. Yeah, this is such a weird season when it comes to idols because it's literally not a single one has been played yet, and nobody knows like where any are. Like because Dale hasn't told a soul. Yeah. And Lisa never told a yeah. soul. I feel like so, there hasn't been enough speculation about it. Like, I don't know why. Why aren't people more paranoid about it? They were like pretty paranoid. Yeah. You know. think? I feel like they're per- they're paranoid enough that they had this whole elaborate plan to get Matthew to play one. But like, I don't know. I guess they just like they just kept picking off El Norte's, and I I don't think they really thought that El Norte's had any of them. Like they did they didn't seem to think that Katie or Megan or Nate mm-hmm. had an idol. Yeah, they thought and I, I had feel like yeah, they definitely yeah, which is why they split votes. Mm-hmm. But like, yeah, sadly you didn't. So that was that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no. Also, that yeah, the cooking with Shannon bit was great too. With like the yeah, oh my god, it was making me hungry because they showed like the montage of her eating all the food during the confessionals. Yeah, I was dogs gotta yeah, eat. yeah. Dogs gotta dogs eat. Gotta eat. <laughs> but the that. opposite of dogs though apparently shannon also likes cat now what the, the development that none <laughs> of us cats also me. gotta eat cats gotta eat no cats gotta go to bed because she has <laughs> cats gotta sleep RCC. cats gotta sleep it's raining dogs cats and dogs eat. for shannon mm-hmm. it is it really is Shannon cats gotta loves- sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Dogs gotta eat. Cats gotta sleep. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, can it? I, I have RTC at 0500. Mm-hmm. It's already 7:30 p.m. and we're doing a stupid challenge. That is hilarious. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, it looks like you know they were messing with Matthew. Uh. And even though Shannon seems to like Cat, no one else really does. Um, but it <laughs> yes. seems like it seems like yeah, it seems like Matthew really needed to well, win. I thought Ivy did. Yeah, I guess like, I mean, it's not like everyone disliked Cat. It seems like as much as the fans do, or some of the fans do. I feel like there's definitely some like cat there's some fans Cat stands. Come on, there's yeah, some there Cat are. stands out there. A yeah. lot of people are like, like Cat's really growing on me. Mm-hmm. I feel like Kat's really funny. Like, I don't know. I feel like people, some people are taking her too seriously. Yeah. Where I, I, I get it. Like, if you, like, there's some people that really want to be in the game. And it can be, like, annoying to see, like, the person that's, like, openly complaining about the game, making it further than them. Like, even you, Jack, were saying, like, wow, I was kind of annoyed that, like, I got voted off. And then Kat didn't even go to the challenge. Like, I would have died to go to that challenge. Yeah. Like, you were talking about that. Yeah. But, you know... You can't hate too much. We're all just, I don't know, we're all just college kids in a little college club at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, it's it's pretty it's funny, though, like, how out of the loop, like, Kat is. Like, she said, I think, that, like, she only really gets her information from, like, the tribe meetings, and then Shannon also talks oh, to yeah. her sometimes. Yeah. So, yeah, but she's she's still surviving. She's out there. She's out there. It's like almost like against her will. Like she doesn't even want to be yeah. there. She's like, wow, like I guess I'm gonna still be in this stupid game because I haven't been disqualified yet. Somehow. I think I think she had a line where she was like, Yeah, I, I wish I would get disqualified. And Shannon like told her, like, no, that'd be bad for my game. She's like, Well, I guess I'm staying in the game because <laughs> Shannon wants me to. Aww. That reminds me of Mallory being like telling all of us that she wanted us to win. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. Wait, that- really? Yeah, yeah. That? Mallory was like, "No." I'm oh yeah, that was like a big part I'm for her game. I'm gonna help you win. Yeah. yeah. Like oh, she, she, she said that to like each of us in the yeah, yeah, so yeah like me and Sarah. Like yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, that was yeah, like Mallory. one of the most underrated. I remember talking about this because yeah. we've talked about Mallory for so much, both here and in the Discord chat and everywhere. But yeah. Yeah. But I, I don't know if Cat is necessarily coming from the same strategic no, mindset as Mallory, right. but maybe no. she is. Like, give her the yeah. benefit of the doubt. Maybe, yeah. maybe Kat, is Kat going to have a redemption arc just like yeah. uh, like Mallory end up winning the game? 
Yeah, I happen. mean, yeah. Maybe possible. Mallory will give her Maggie's little book and like pass it. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be great. I mean, it, I feel like she definitely has been an interesting arc to go see from like Shannon hating Cat and complaining about her like so much to where it shows us like hours on end, and now it's like Shannon. It seems like she like she, she like likes Cat now. Mm-hmm. Like they're like friends. Oh yeah, <laughs> she's like cried about her, bitched about her everything and now she's like you know what i like her <laughs> I, I love shannon because I, I feel like the only thing that you have to do like to be your friend is just like be funny like if you're not funny she'll yeah. hate you and like, I feel like, like maybe for a while boring. yeah i feel like for a while she didn't get like cat's humor or, like didn't realize how funny cat was and then you know once she realized that cat's funny she likes her Look, Matthew, Matthew is real. keeps getting dragged. Oh. Yeah, I was just about to say, Matthew keeps getting dragged. She's like, at least he, she has a sense of humor on, like, Matthew. <laughs> and then Matthew got dragged in that movie, too. Mm-hmm. I know. And then I when they're talking about bad edits, they, like, flashback to Matthew. Oh. Yeah, I know. I do feel a little bad for Matthew. Like, he is getting a little bit dragged through the mud. Like, <laughs> I, I feel like he's a good sport about it. Yeah, he is. Um, but. He laughs at himself. Yeah, yeah. Matthew, like, he's just happy to be here at this point. Mm-hmm. Like, I think he, it's just like every single episode at the beginning, he's like, whoo, like, made it Woo! through another episode. <laughs> like, so excited. Like, he's, I think he's just like happy to survive every week and just like yeah. still be in the game. And he, and he still is. It's like final six, right? Mm-hmm. Made it to the final six. Um, with his strategy of like lowering his threat level. True. Very true. And then, and he won immunity when he needed yeah. it. He was going to get voted off if he didn't win immunity. Yeah, that's a clutch win. Clutch coin flip. I love the part where him and Jackson, like, fake out Nate and make him, like, oh, cross the line. It was so mean. <laughs> I that's know. That's so funny, though. I didn't understand the challenge at first, but then I was like, wait, this is so creative. Who came up with that? It was Kevin and Will. Yeah, I really like that, like... The aspect of it, it's like, do you go for the the riddle or do you like try to stay by the seat? It's kind of like spoons. It reminds me, you know, the game spoons. Yeah. It yeah, kind of yeah. reminds me of that a little bit. Cause like you have yeah. your own task, but then you have to like watch out for what everyone else is doing. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was a cool challenge. But wait, what did Jackson say about Tails? Wasn't he like Tails never fails? Yeah, yeah. Tails well, never fails. It did. Yeah. Poor Jackson. Dale texted him, like, coin flip boy, LOL. What is he now in challenges? Is he six and five? <laughs> yeah, he's yeah, six and five in challenges. Mm-hmm. Tough, tough. Rough I love so that. Um, I also, like, I kind of love that, like, with this chat. I mean, obviously, I, I feel like the riddles were probably too hard, which was, like, brought the challenge down a bit. But I really loved, like, all the strategy that happened during the challenge. Like, that was super interesting to watch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I feel like this, like one of the most iconic like moments of the episode, and like probably in like the last few episodes, was like the big pinky swear that all of them did like at the challenge. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, and Ivy never brings a breaks a pinky swear. Yeah, never, never. It's always when like the, the challenges drag on where some cool strategy goes down. Like mm-hmm. yeah, like the last challenge in season one. The yeah, final four in season two. Yeah, yeah, especially when people start to leave, and then you can start to be like, okay, us here against them. Exactly. Or, yeah, mm-hmm. You start breaking people down. But then it's like you can never really trust it because everyone just wants the challenge to end. Exactly. It was also yeah. kind of perfect that like the four people left were the first four that started in like the original mm-hmm. like four rooms. Mm-hmm. It was like Ivy, Dale, Jackson, and Matthew were the Ross people. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! I thought that was funny. Jackson was like, "Look how much, look how far we've come. Look how much we've grown together." <laughs> <laughs> um. So Ivy pinky swears and like, it's, I thought it's funny too. She's like, "I never break a pinky swear," and like literally the only time we ever see her do a pinky swear, she breaks it like <laughs> immediately. Yeah. yeah. I believe that she never breaks them outside of the game. Mm-hmm. She seems yeah. like a very stick to her word type of girl. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to ask her. Type of gal, yeah. Mm-hmm. 
mm -hmm. about about how she deals with pinky pinky swears in the real world. If she's broken <laughs> anymore since. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I guess like, I guess like I can see how the cat vote. Did, I mean, theoretically, I guess it could have worked, but like Shannon didn't want to do it, which was tough. Yeah, yeah honestly, like, yeah, I feel like a lot of it's like, does Shannon want this to go down? Because mm -hmm. she has cat with her, mm -hmm. she can like. I think she has a lot of sway in people. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And she very like vocally does not like being told what to do, and like she's made that clear to people, and like, and that's the real, like reason that like and it's already affected you know the final nine um, boot like where it was Katie instead of Megan. Mm -hmm. So like you know like, I kudos for her to like somehow like she has like people know that um, she's gonna look out for her best interest, and somehow it hasn't really like backfired on her that much yet. Mm -hmm. Like people will still really trust her and want to like bring her to the finals, as she said many times this episode, she's not like that. People want to bring her to the finals, but yeah, like she is just she's very like wants to be part of things going on, doesn't want to be just mansplained, mansplained or you know anything. So yeah, yeah. So Dale leaves for his grandma's funeral, which like. Poor Dale. That's just a tough, tough thing to go through during the game. Like it seems like he was just kind of like unplugging, mm -hmm. and then it's just like immediately Ivy and Shannon are just like, "We gotta get out, Dale, making the move." I know it didn't work like the Johnny Fairplay. Yeah, method. I was gonna say it was oh. like reverse Johnny Fairplay method. See, I feel like do Dale wouldn't do the Johnny Fairplay. Like if anybody, if like Jackson said his grandma died, I'd be. <laughs> I, I, I'd pause for a second. I wanted. I would want. I would look up some obituaries. That's really dark, but <laughs> like I would. I would want to verify if Jackson's grandma actually died. Dale, I would at least trust him that he's not making that up. Oh yeah, Jackson. I would not put it past him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think that in Survivor Maryland, someone did that once. Like Chris Lecomte said that his dog died. Yeah, yeah. And I think he like ended up getting. Like surviving tribal because of it too. So it's, it's a it's a strategy that's happened. I yeah, Jack. Yeah, yeah. I feel like Dale and Jackson would not have, mm -hmm. would, that would not have changed their minds. <laughs> what if I was just like crying to Shannon though about Mister? Mm -hmm. Maybe that maybe that actually would have maybe, maybe that would have helped. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Terrible. Because I mean, this episode is shown that Shannon is a very emotional player. Mm -hmm. Um, which I think is like why we love Shannon because Shannon's so yeah. she, like we see every single emotion like you yeah. can have like Shannon has it like dialed up to ten. Oh, for sure. Yeah, like literally, I already was a huge Shannon fan, you know, just from playing with her and just like watching this all go down, like from the jury and everything. But actually, being able to just like watch her confessionals just been like she is literally like my favorite Survivor Michigan player ever. Just like I, she was just and like this episode especially like I feel like she had a ton of episode a ton of confessionals just yeah every like part of the emotional experience like funny sassy crying anger like it's literally every possible survivor emotion you could have. I know. Yeah, that's so true. Does she like, have a her, lot of confessionals? Yeah, she was. She had a lot. I mean, Shannon like just she filmed a lot and all mm -hmm. of them. It was like it's insane how good like all of them were. Like it was like hard to choose what to put in just because of how many good confessionals she had. Like yeah, I could say the same about Jackson and Dale too. Like I feel like the three of them all filmed like so much footage, and all of it was just like so like every other. It was like an hour where it's like they're like hour long videos where like every ten seconds is like a one liner that's like good enough to put into the episode. Mm -hmm. It's like you could just have like hours of the three of them just going just talking and it's hilarious all right where's the extended cut where's the extended shannon cut where we could just get an hour of confessionals <laughs> oh yeah this you know well we'll auction off access to Dr shannon's google drive um <laughs> you know raise raise money for uh i don't know survivor season 20 Survivor Honestly, michigan season 20 when, when we all not play a bad idea. yeah yeah because it's gonna be a million dollar prize for season 20 right oh wait we're not supposed to announce that yet 
Oh shit! You know the yeah, classic so, Shannon. Well, yeah, you guys are you guys are in the Patreon if you're following the you know KYTL podcast, so you can mm-hmm. know about Survivor Michigan season twenty. Um, it's gonna you know bring it back, bring it back the best of the best, you know. So Jack and Sarah, not me, it'll be great. <laughs> um, nah. And obviously, you know. Basically, all of season four will have to come back because mm-hmm. all of them are incredible. On all TV. icons, yeah. But um, so Ivy telling Jackson about the plan, honestly, like that reminded me a lot of like the week that I got voted off. When like, I don't know, honestly, like you know how I, I kind of had this plan, like all right, we'll vote off Jack, whatever. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, all right, Maggie, do not tell Sarah X about this plan. Like, do not tell like this is between <laughs> me and you. Like, don't spread this around. And I feel like that reminds me a lot of like, and I was because, uh, because uh, like yeah, Sarah and Jack are close, or Sarah will do something. I don't know. I don't trust it. And say like Shannon telling warning Ivy and I just told Jackson. I feel like that yeah. Like, yeah, oh feels my very I similar. Was, I was actually like screaming when that was happening. I was like, no, like why would you tell Jackson's literally gonna ruin everything? I know. Like uh, there's no like way everyone... he's not gonna do something with that info. Mm-hmm. I feel like everyone was like yelling at their TV screens when that happened. <laughs> I really was like, no. Yeah, like you have the votes already. Like you <laughs> don't have to also get his vote. Yeah. I know. Like they, they had, Cat's going to sh- do whatever Shannon wants to do. Mm-hmm. And then Nate, like he hates Dale. Like he's going to vote off Dale. Mm-hmm. I love how scene, that scene too, where like Shannon is like talking to Nate. Like, yeah, like totally have to vote off Dale. Like Dale's so nice. I love Dale. And Nate's like, yeah. And then he goes to confessional like, Dale's the worst. Blah, blah, blah. He has to pretend he likes Dale in front of Shannon. But yeah, literally, I can't believe the IV told Jackson. Mm-hmm. That's just, I don't know. At the same time, Ivy had this plan of bringing Jackson to the final three, like her, Jackson, and Nate. So I can see how, like, if she sincerely wanted to go to finals with Jackson, like, she doesn't want to blindside Jackson. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's so like, even though Jackson true, blindsided true. her and voted yeah. out Lisa earlier. Like, it's, I still don't you know, get why she wanted yeah. to go to the end with Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's true. When you, when you can go with Nate and Kat, then well, you don't really need Jackson. Mm-hmm. You know, you vote off Dale. You go to the final six. I feel like at that point... Yeah, I feel like at that point, like Ivy can kind of try to ride the middle between Shannon and Jackson mm-hmm. because Jackson is going to be blind. Jackson and Matthew will kind of be in the bottom. They've just been blindsided. Mm-hmm. Like at that point, like I feel like I, 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 I yeah, I don't think that she, Ivy needed Jackson her final three, even though like she's, I think she, she thought that she could beat him because he was like kind of a snake, but yeah, I, that was definitely that was just not a great move. It's not a great move. You already have four out of seven. You don't need five out of seven voting for Dale. Yeah. Yeah, it's rough. Because Jackson yeah. goes and tattles right to Dale. He gets out his gets out his phone. He's like Dale's like, yeah, I'm a, I'm the Godfather. I got my informants all around. Jackson's an informant. Yeah. So this might be getting a little ahead, but um, I can't believe that Dale still like was even like that did not want to play play his idol. Like I feel like if I was in his position, which I kind of was in a similar position like we're talking about, mm-hmm. like with two idols in your pocket, like if there's if you there's even like whispers of an attempt against you, like I feel like you gotta just play one of those. Like I can't believe I don't know. That's honestly yeah that's honestly such like the balls that Dale had to make that move. I mean, he he guaranteed himself final four. So yeah. like, that's that's honestly such a good move. Like, major props to Dale for having the balls to do that. Like, I I really respect when people have the mentality of like, either I'm gonna go, I'm playing to win. Like, go big mm-hmm. or go home. Like, I respect that Dale had that mentality instead of kind of playing conservatively because he just he recognizes like this is a game like. If I, I think he thought that if he was if he played them at seven and six, he then he has both he has two tribals where he's vulnerable mm-hmm. at five and four. And like this move, like I feel like it paid off obviously because now he only has one where he's vulnerable, just final yeah. four. And he could win final four, then he doesn't even like 
have any chance to get voted off. True. So, yeah, yeah that I know. I feel like I feel like I would I would not be able to sit on my idols. Like if I had idols. I would not be able to sit on him like that. Yeah, I guess he just really felt like he had such a good read on Shannon and felt like he could really just, like, knew that she was going to go back to him in the end. Because, like, I don't know, just it really just seemed like Shannon was really wavering between what to do, you know? And, like, I feel like if you, even if she comes back to you at the end, it's like, all right, I'm not going to do it. Like, I don't, like, whoosh, that's such balls of steel to actually, like, be like, all right, she's she's not doing it, you know? I know. I feel like Dale, I, I just think that I got to give major props to his social game, like mm -hmm. that he's able to, that he was able to, um, I mean, not only recover from the Lisa vote, but then now in this, in this week where Shannon literally was like trying to vote him off and had this plan to vote him off, like able to not only like kind of get, get in good with Shannon and be confident she, he's like, she's on his side, but then also like, have the perception to know that he's going to be safe and not play it. I mean, Dale, Dale's been yeah. playing the, I can't really knock I any mean, of the decisions he's made in this game. Yeah. What are we at now? Final seven? Final six with Ivy. Six. It's like he has two idols. There's not that many rounds left. Like, yeah. he, like, I feel like a lot of other players would just be like, okay, I'm going to play one just to be safe this week, just so I don't go home with two idols in my pocket. He was like, nah, I want to make sure I get further. <laughs> I mean, I mean, like, what? Yeah. If Dale would have gone home with if this vote with two idols in his pocket. That would be I, so I think, bad. I think no Jack would have, like, had a heart attack and, like, died. And, yeah. Like, <laughs> no one would ever be able to make fun of me again. <laughs> That's true. You would have been so happy. Yeah. We'd be like, ha, at least I wasn't that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was just the balls. That's just crazy. I mean, I also think that by that point, like, for dramatic, it was added to be a little bit more dramatic than it was. I think that, like, Shannon and Dale had, like, were really on the same page by that point. Mm -hmm. I mean, even the tribal council, though, mm -hmm. Dale's still, like, he's at a voting booth. He's saying, like, I could either I go home tonight or, like, I go to Final Four. Yeah. Like, you can never know for sure whether Shannon. Um, was lying to him to get him to not play an idol and yeah, saying, if, like, oh, yeah, I'm on your side. Yeah, what if Shannon's just, even if they're having all these really close heart chart meetings, what if she's just, ice, like, ice cold, and like, you know? Yeah. What if she's just doing the same thing that I was doing to Ben, you know, and just being like, exactly. oh, God, I'm so sorry. I even thought about doing this, blah, 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 blah. It already happened once this season. <laughs> yeah, like, it could happen again, but, yeah. Yeah. I love that one scene where his Shannon and Dale are, like, watching season one and it's a superlative <laughs> episode and like george is asking like who do you trust with your life in this game and they'll like pause it and he's like oh i trust you shannon oh yeah. like just we those love little that. things like such good social play and just I know. You know, making yeah, it honestly like, trust yeah. it's all about it's all about the little things it is yeah he's a pro so I mean, I guess for Dale, it's really going to come down. At this point, like, it's really going to come down to Final Four. I mean, assuming mm -hmm. that he plays his idols at six and five, maybe he makes some crazy move at six and plays them both. Like, I don't know what he's going to do. Yeah. But assuming he plays them at six and five, like, it really is going to come down to Final Four, I think. Like, maybe, I don't know. I'm not sure, I guess, about how the jury feels about Dale. Um, But I, I, given how Ivy's talked about him and, like, how much he's done in this game, like, I feel like if he makes it, he's going to have a pretty good pitch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that it's kind of being funny on the jury at this point because, like, we, because right now it's all just El Norte people, you know? So, like, you know, at least, in, like, until Ivy got on, it's like we just are really going off of, like, our conversations and what we see at Tribal. So I feel like we didn't maybe necessarily – think of Dale as so amazing yet. I mean, obviously we didn't know about his idols. And like, I, I remember at this point, I really was just thinking that um, Jackson like really had like a ton of control mm -hmm. of what was going on. Cause I feel like he's a little more like showboatier and stuff like that. 
But yeah, I don't want to get too, I don't know, I'm trying to be careful with what I'm saying. No, that's interesting to yeah. know, like, what the jury was thinking at the time mm -hmm. about, like, it reminds me, I've, actually, I thought that Jackson had such a funny line at Tribal, by the way, about, yeah. like, the, <laughs> the Bible verse. Uh, the idols. Wait, what did he say again? <laughs> so he said, like, I think that Cooper asked, like, what you guys, like, uh, Cooper's asking about idols. And he's like, yeah, Jackson, like, no idols have been played yet. Like, what do you think about the idols? And Jackson goes, like, you know, I, in times of uh, idols introduce uncertainty to the game, and in times of uncertainty, I reference the good, the good book, the Holy Bible, and you know, First John thirteen, blah blah, blah verse verse says, um, "Children, stay away from idols," or something like that. <laughs> That's literally it. Actually, is that in the Bible? Yeah, yeah. I thought. Wait, well, Jack, are you the, religious? Me? No. Yeah. Uh oh. But I just saw people comment on YouTube. Oh, I haven't yeah, actually yeah, yeah. myself. I trust the YouTube commenters. That, whoa, Jackson that actually is a real quote. I know Sam. Like, do you know? If that, were you familiar with that verse? Yeah, I mean, I looked it up, and I, I remember, I remember, like, cat at try a cat at a line. Like, if someone fact checked that, and then mm -hmm. like, I think for the edit, I was like, yeah, Ian, you gotta like actually like throw up the real verse in the edit to like fact check it. And show that that's actually the verse because that's hilarious. I, I looked it up and I was like, sure enough, that's what it was. I, I thought the funny, a really funny, underrated part of that too was right after he has that whole spiel, Jackson says, like, but you know, I think and advantages are different though. Like, that doesn't apply to mm -hmm. advantages. Like, which is like a funny line that, like, he, I, I love that he slipped that in there because, like, I don't think anybody in the game caught that he said that, but like, you know, obviously he has the vote steal advantage. Mm -hmm. So I just thought that was really funny. What a sly little guy. Sly little, little snake. Little snake. Um, so, uh, also, I love, like, that they were the, that season three tribal spot. And, like, you guys, you, you the jury was, like, right there. Like, you guys <laughs> were all, like, drinking. Like, it was just, it was funny seeing, like, you and Katie and Megan's reactions to everything. You guys were very animated. Yeah, I feel like there's not a lot of, it's not often that it's just like one shot with the jury and like the, the tribe, and the, you know, the main people in like in the same exact shot. So and I feel like us drinking definitely added to our little like animatedness and trying just to be a little silly. But yeah, <laughs> I, I remember this tribal very well. <laughs> Katie, had, Katie had the popcorn. Mm -hmm. You took, you like finished your drink when when Ivy like walked out and like a Toki Doki mm -hmm. went home. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's so funny. So, yeah, good time. Dale, also that one scene where like Cooper asked if Dale's gonna play an idol and like it shows all the flashbacks to like Dale find the idols and like mm -hmm. Dale talking about how like he doesn't want to get blindsided with two idols in his pocket. Like <sighs> so good. Damn. Yeah. Well, Dale made the right choice. He's going Final Four, supposedly, apparently. And I mean, Ivy. Tokyo Loki 6 is four yet. Up. He still has to actually play the idols. You know, a lot of things could happen. That's true. You never know. Maybe he'll do something crazy with them. Yeah. But Ivy's gone. Tokyo Loki 6 is, is no more. And Nate is really confused and really <laughs> on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't know how Nate has just... You know, Nate is kind of giving me Nick energy right now, where it's like mm -hmm. he just keeps surviving. Yeah, kind yeah. of annoying to the other people, I can but see like that. an icon in the confessionals, yeah. and like mm -hmm. people love him. Mm -hmm. And he, you know, about to be like the one voted out at least a couple of times, maybe not every time, but then like yeah. something else happens, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. So funny. Like, it, like they're gonna start self imploding. Perhaps yeah. we'll get to the end. <laughs> I feel like this is such a random, like, final six. Like, if you would have said at the beginning of the season that, like, oh, yeah, like, Nate's going to be the last El Norte standing and Matthew's going to be the last returnee yes, standing yeah. and, like, Dale and Jackson are both going to be there. Like, I feel like Kat's going to be there. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like it, no one would have predicted that. Mm. That's why you love Survivor. Yep. But, I mean, do you think that uh, Shannon made the right move? in this tribal is it too or too early to tell i mean because she was very back if she would have voted for dale and cat would have voted for dale he'd been gone with two idols yeah. in his pocket yeah i don't that know that's so true it's hard to say i think 
we're getting close enough to the end where it's hard to really go too in depth with what could have happened, you know, yeah. without trying to spoil things to happen. I don't know, <laughs> but like definitely, this is a huge moment in the season that you can go back on and like it could be a very different. You know, obviously, if like we know that Dale probably, probably is going to be in Final Four now, and so that's just a big thing that could be completely different right now. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's a very non committal answer. I'm just yeah. I mean, we only have a couple more KYTL episodes to see. Only two more episodes of the season, so ah. I guess well, it's not yeah. too long until we see how it plays out. Yeah. Um. Also, shout out to Dale's mustache boy at the very end of the episode. <laughs> Where is, is I feel like Jack, I mean, I feel like Dale puts boy at the end of everything. Mm-hmm. Like, boy, D-O-I. boy or dad, he's swag daddy, the couch boy, the mustache boy, survivor boy, whatever. He's got a lot of them. He's got a lot of names. But, uh, rip to Ivy. Ivy, um, yeah, she was, I mean, she was, she had the move. I, I actually, I respect a lot that Ivy decided to finally make a move. I feel like everyone's been saying for weeks, like, next nothing's week, happening next week. Yeah. next week, next week. Like, she finally, she just got the ball rolling and, like, did mm-hmm. something. Like, even though it got her voted off, like, I respect yeah, that Ivy did something. so close to actually working, you know? I know. But, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, she, I, whether or not telling Jackson, whether or not it was Jackson's mistake for not, for telling Dale or Shannon's mistake for not voting Dale or Ivy's mistake for telling Jackson. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. I guess I, I guess that's something I'm curious about Ivy's thoughts on. Oh, should we get her oh. on the phone? Shall get we? Ivy. Shall Let's we? get Ivy in here. Guys, get your pinkies out. <laughs> <laughs> Ivy, what's up? Hey, what's up? Hey, Ivy. Oh. Yeah. Season four is back, Jack. Woo! Yeah, it's been so fun, like connecting with everybody again, like talking to everybody. It's been it's been awesome because I haven't kept in touch with like a ton of people. So just being able to actually like see all of your faces again, it's awesome. I feel that. I think it's like so funny, like texting people back now mm-hmm. because episodes come out and like you actually find out what they said, and I'm like, yeah. Oh, how did you not catch on about certain things? Uh-huh. Yeah. See, it used to be, Jack used to be catching up with all these people that he voted off. And now he's catching up with all the people that voted him off. Yeah, yeah. I literally, voting Jack off, I don't think I was there that day. Yeah, you <laughs> were. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Lucy like, voted for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was... That whole like um, tribal end um, challenge, like rewatching it back, it's like weird because I was like, oh my gosh, I was literally in my bed, like freaking out a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like, telling Lucy, like, hey, vote Jack. And then she's like, recount. And I'm like, what the fuck happened? <laughs> I'm like, Jack? Question mark. <laughs> oh my God. Uh. Yeah, it's, it, was, it was funny watching myself just like sink, just being like so sad there. <laughs> yeah, what was, what was it like just on a macro level, like getting to watch your vote out happen? Um, it was it was weird. Like re watching it, like I'm not as like high emotions mm-hmm. as when it actually happened, but then kind of like seeing certain things that were caught on film, like me and Nate making eye contact with each other the moment like Dale got the idol question because we were convinced he had an idol. And so like (laughs) that whole tribal, I was like, wow, there's like so many things I could have done differently, but like, I don't regret anything that was done. So because there's so there's so much stuff that we had to get into, but before before that, I just I just let the audience know what have you been up to the last few years? How have you been? Um, I have been doing great. After I got voted out, I was like, oh, I'm actually a senior in college. I need to figure out what I'm doing with my life. Um, so actually, while we were filming for the season, I was like interviewing for jobs, and I flew out to New York, got a job in New York, 
lived out in New York, worked for a year, and then moved out to Philly. Um, and I've been living in Philly for the past year and doing grad school. So, yeah. Nice. On to the on to the second thing after college then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I love that. On to like I tried to like adult for a year and I was like, oh, this kind of is not fun. So I was like, let me just go back to school. Which is, like I don't yeah. know, like more. Love don't that. blame him. <laughs> Wait, what kind of uh, grad school are you doing? I'm getting a master's in interdisciplinary health sciences. Ooh. Yeah. So really, it's just a master's to like push me into med school. So it's not as fancy as the name sounds. Ooh, so you're going to eventually go back to med school in Michigan when you're 30 and you'll be like Dale, like you'll come back and mm-hmm. like, you know, have a husband and just like play again. <laughs> For swag dad's sake, if I get casted for another season of Survivor as a med student, I would actually think about replaying to maybe finally win a title. <laughs> yeah, so be, you'll be the swag mom. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh yeah, I could be swag mom, which is also looking back at the name swag dad. Like Dale had zero kids. <laughs> exactly. So you don't have to have kids either. You yeah. can be a swag mom and just like not have kids. I that thought was- like everybody else on the season was like his children. Like I, th- I thought we were all, you know, the swag yeah. children. All swag dad's children. He mm-hmm. did he did drive us around a lot, so I guess it did. It did work like out. Drive, like when you guys went to uh uh he White drove Castle. into the well, yeah, White Castle. White Castle. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I heard I heard you were like one of the only people that was like really other people that was really pushing to go to White Castle. Like you're the one that didn't hate it. It was just me and Dale. I, okay, first of all, I love White Castle because I'm vegetarian and they were one of the first fast food restaurants to come out with a vegan vegetarian option. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I was like, White Castle, like you're good for that. Um, I also had a photo shoot for my friend, her um, headshots, took them at White Castle, great experience. So I was like, I really love this institution and organization. I love that. Of course, um, it seemed like the rest of the tribe not quite enjoy their white castle experience. Also, I think they faked the excitement because Will and I were really into it. Because <laughs> watching are hyping it up so much, so much. Watching them reply, I was like, "Oh, everyone really did not like White Castle." <laughs> That's funny. Hey, at least they were like nice in the moment. Like they probably didn't tell tell you guys how much they were hating it until they went into their confessionals. And then, like literally, they probably all spent like thirty minutes just shitting on White Castle because it, like, they're like, this is horrible food. So funny. Um. So, going back to like near the beginning of your game, um. So you came in like knowing both Nate and Ben. Yeah. Like, what was? What was like your relationship with them before the game? And like, what was your strategy going into the game? Like knowing that both of them were going to play. Um, so I actually didn't know Nate was playing until mm-hmm. literally the day we started. And we had like literally met right before and we're like, oh, we're both in this. Like, and that's when we made our first alliance. And Nate and I go back to his freshman year orientation. I was his orientation leader. So all the rumors were true. Nate and I. <laughs> became friends at orientation. Um, and there was one night where it was like me, Nate, Bree, and one of our other friends, Max, and their friend, Carly, we stayed up to like 3 a.m. just like talking um, in the basement of East Quad. And so like we became super close. And then Ben and I have a mutual friend from the summer camp I went to, which was the high school Ben went to. And so, I forget how we like first talked. I think it was like at orientation too, where like I saw him and I was like, oh, I know Lane. He was like, oh, I know Lane. And like we became friends, <laughs> but it was not as close as like Nate and I were as friends. So going in, I was like, I heard some rumors about Ben season. Two. Was it season two? Definitely. Or no, season three. Season season three. three. Yeah. I was like, I heard Ben rumors season three and how savage he was. Um, and at the music camp that I went to, the high school he went to, there was this thing about musical theater kids. And Ben was in the theater realm that they were crazy, like bad shit crazy. 
and you don't want to get too close with them. So I definitely carried that over into Survivor, and I was like, I know the strengths and the levels he will get to, and I was like, I need to get him out. That's funny. Yeah, I was gonna say because like it seemed like at the beginning of the game, like you and Nate right away were like an alliance, and you and, and then like you know Toki Doki kept winning, but you were like. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna like trash Ben as much as possible. Like you were kind of like throwing him under the bus. Yeah. Like you had this whole like five dinner, and you were like telling them everything about Ben. Yeah, because also, well, I guess looking at from Ben's side, he was like, "Oh, I know Ivy. Like we can be really." Yeah. I think he was really set about Ben, Nate, Ivy, like final three, but. I don't like. Yeah, you guys were on very different pages. He thought that he had like such a great in with the other tribe, and like, yeah. And I remember when Ben and I met up. Like, he told me so much. Like, he mm -hmm. told me so much about um, El Norte side. I didn't tell him much about Toki Doki, but he like told me so much about El Norte. He told me a lot about all the returnees and like their game strategy and everything. And the whole time, I was like, oh yeah, and like laughing with him, and I was like. No, like I can't, I can't do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. giving much back. <laughs> yeah. So then, what made you want to go in? Like, so he's giving you all this information, and it seems like you gave a lot of that information to like your full tribe. So, like, what made you want to like just completely tell everything to like maybe not just a few people, but like everybody else in your tribe? Um, just to like really get the vote out Ben Fire going. Mm -hmm. Cause I was like, if I tell them this, like maybe they'll see me as a threat, but if they see I'm on board with voting Ben out, like maybe they would get on board with it too. Um, I guess people saw it in very different lights. Um, but I think like that was the motivation. Cause like going into the game, I definitely was like, Ben is my biggest threat no matter what. Cause I was like, also we knew each other so well, like from outside the game too. So I was like, I don't know how much personal is going to carry over and i was like i don't want a lot of personal to carry over at mm -hmm. that moment so i was like okay let me tell them like all this information also eliza and matthew were there too so they were getting the information that ben told me about them and i was like hopefully they got super scared that ben is saying all this about them too yeah. interesting so in the early game, like you you had your alliance with Nate, you had your kind of like one sided rivalry with Ben, which was funny. And then like as far as Toki Doki goes, like how did you who did you think you were closest to at that time? Um I would say probably Dale. I would say I would think like throughout the whole like season, I was on Toki Doki, it was Dale I was closest to because I think I talked to him the most. And then when I did talk to him, we actually like had really in depth conversations and like they were like natural, easy to like person to talk to. And then everyone else, like when I talked with Jackson, Shannon, Kat, Matthew, well, Jackson, Shannon, and Kat, every time I talked to them, I was like, okay, this is like something I checked off on my to do list. Like I talked yeah. to them. Versus mm -hmm. every time I talked to Matthew, I was like, I also every time I talked to Matthew, I was like, make it as early as possible in the day, so you can just listen to him talk like as quick <laughs> as possible, <laughs> and then you can move on. And I like we would be in Mason Hall at like eight thirty in the morning, and I'm not a morning person, so I would just sit there and I was like, oh, this is perfect. Like I'm not going to retain any information, so I just sit there and be like, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's hilarious i love that i love that one confession you had like talking about him being like we were talking about him being a lion and, and everything yeah 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 oh yeah it's so funny i think the only reason i came to that conclusion was like one day when we met super like early in the morning the only thing i remember that he wore a dj khaled t-shirt and me and my friends had also bought my brother a DJ Khaled t-shirt. So I knew the price <laughs> of that t-shirt. And I just looked at him and I was like, this makes so much sense. Because <laughs> people actually love DJ Khaled enough to buy his merch. <laughs> yeah. 
That's so funny. Yeah, Tokidoki, I feel like your tribe was just like, what's so funny? It's like El Norte had their own like chaotic shit going on. And but Tokidoki, I felt like you were like this kind of like very like, oh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Like a, like a family that all like kind of hated each other, but also like loved each other. Like, I don't even know how to describe it. Like, it really, it guys- really was like that. It definitely was like, we all were like, okay, we're in this. Like, we didn't choose to be in this together, but like, we're in this together. But then there were certain things that we bond deeply over. Um, we bonded. I think what really connected us was our bond for the hatred for producers. Um, yeah. We after the like trivia challenge, we're like, no, we hate them, and that really like got us together. And I think like any family, if you can figure out one thing to hate, like you're pretty, you're pretty solid. Yep, yep. And you guys, I met, like, every week, like, as a big group, too. Yeah. There was a lot of, like, food, just, or, like, there were some times where we just meet and talk. Like, I remember very early on in the game, like, Adam was still in. We literally sat in Ross and just talked to each other about, like, who we are and, like, what we've done in our lives. Yeah. That's nice. Um, so going into the merge, um, so like, what was your reaction when Elisa went home? Um, I know like, yeah. and you know, obviously like you didn't really know that it was going to happen, like it was going to happen, but like also she was a returnee. Like what was like, how did, how did like Dale and Jackson explain that to you? And like, what was your reaction to it? Um, I vividly remember sitting in bubble tea with Dale explaining to me this whole like thing of how Elisa went down um so like very very on early in the game I didn't like a confessional like this because I didn't film that much as everyone else did um but I remember I was like up late at night like survivor on my mind like Mm -hmm. couldn't stop thinking about it so I like deeply analyzed everyone because I was a neuroscience major so I was like let me use my skill Mm. (laughs) So I did a deep analysis of every member of Toki Doki. And when I met at Bubble Tea with Dale and like the way he was reacting, I was like, there is something like up about him. Like he was very, very anxious. And in my analysis of Dale, I was like, he's in Ross. And I was like, people in business, when they become anxious, it's when they know they're like possibly are about to lose a deal. And so Whoa. I, was like, yeah. I was like, oh, me trusting like if i trust him he's gonna feel solid in our connection and i was like oh but if i counteract it it's gonna mess him up a bit so he was like telling me all these things at the end like and multiple times throughout the conversation i like had a confused face and i think it triggered him to continue talking more to like rationalize why they did what they did um and by the end i was like oh, okay like it doesn't hurt me that much because I wasn't that close with Elisa, but mm-hmm. I was like, questionable about Dale. And then when Jackson told me like how he came about the whole like decision, um, Jackson, like from day one, I was like, this guy is a snake. And the way he was saying it, I was like, oh, Jackson, I'm not surprised that you did this. <laughs> this 100% is a snake. 100% is a snake. Even though he's not, he didn't go to Ross, even though he's lost, but he's still, he still a snake in him. But I, like, I feel like that's, any lawyer like yeah they have to be like oh yeah to know. lawyers are very snaky too of course yeah yeah, yeah and so i was actually it's an interesting thing because um i think you and jackson had like an alliance that like it wasn't really like there wasn't a ton of footage of you two but i feel like you two were definitely like kind of pretty close too like especially in the merge and like obviously you had your alliance with like jackson and dale and shannon like um so like how did like your and jackson's like alliance go i think our alliance was it was i would say after dale the next person i was like oh i could go final three with was jackson and then shannon so it like kind of makes sense about like what i did right like telling jackson um but it was like we were close and i'd like listen to him say like what he said but there were like certain things that like he would say and i'm like I don't fully trust you because in my analysis of Jackson that I did, I was like, he's a lawyer and lawyers are always going to try to sell you what they want. 
and tells like, I watched enough Law and Order SVU to know when lawyers are trying to like switch it up. And so I like every time I talk to him, I like really would try to have genuine conversations, but I'd always like be trying to find out like where he was being like snaky and sneaky with his tactics. Um, so I'd always like I'd after every conversation I'd have with Jackson, and it would only, he was the only person I would do this. I would like analyze everything you talked about and how I received it and like how he said it to like try to figure out like where he was changing up a bit. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. So like, I think you were saying in the episode you wanted to go final three with Jackson and Nate. Yeah. Right? Do, you, do you think that like, I mean, what was, so did you basically think that like, oh, Jackson's a snake, but people aren't going to want to vote for him in the final three? Definitely. Like that was, cause like looking at everyone else that I could go final three with, I was like, I think Jackson is the only person I could get voted as winner over. So I was like, mm. I, I could beat him. And that's why I wanted to final three. Um, clearly no one would beat Dale. Like, there's no way anyone could beat Dale final three. And that's why I was like, Dale needs to get out. Shannon, yeah. I was like, Shannon seemed too personable with people in different like spots. So I was like, I knew Megan was gonna vote for her. And I was like, if Megan's voting for Shannon, Jack would vote for Shannon. And then I was like, it would be a toss up with Tokidoki if I was with her. And I was like, I would think more people would still vote Shannon over me on Tokidoki. So I was like, Jackson was like the only person I was like, I could get more votes. Hmm. So like, so yeah, so basically, I mean, that definitely makes sense. Like, I'm curious, like, let's say that Shannon and Kat, like, go with your plan and vote off Dale. Um, What was, like, your plan after that to, like, get to the final three? Like, um, So it was right back to the moment when we made that pinky promise where I was like, oh, this is the people we started with. I was going to use emotions to try to win over Jackson and Matthew. I don't know how good of a tactic that would have been. Um, Cause I really, I don't, first of all, I don't think Jackson has any emotions. Yeah. And yeah. Matthew, he's so paranoid. I don't know how it would have worked, but I think I've been able to swing them over. Um, and then I think we would have been able to vote out Shannon first. And then mm -hmm. after vote out Shannon, vote out Matthew. Mm -hmm. Get cat out and then final three. So why wouldn't you want to be in a final three of cat again? I got Matt with cat. Oh, with cat. Yeah. That is a good question. <laughs> you just felt closer with Jackson and like. I guess so. Yeah. Like, but oh, I remember why I didn't want to go with cat because literally, like, it was. I think a lot of people like default take Cat with you final three because she's mm -hmm. a easy person to take along. And I actually like I respected Cat. Like I didn't want to drag her mm -hmm. along because it would be easy. Like I had respect for her, so that's mm -hmm. why I didn't want to take her. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I like the alliance. Like you, Shannon, and Cat. Like the warrior women. Like alliance is like was cool. Like I. It's, it's almost as I was like, so honestly, like sad. Like, I remember being producer at this time, like watching this the episode where you got voted off. I was like, damn, like you three and Nate would have been like a fun group to watch, like do stuff. That would have been fun. I think that would have been hilarious. I think watching Nate and Kat interact every single time <laughs> had me dying of laughter because I knew yeah. from, like both sides that they were not fans of each other, but like they still talk to each other. And I'm like, you both know you're not fans, but like this is entertaining to watch. And so uh, one thing I'm curious about is uh, the pinky promise. Should talk about that. That was, I also, I completely forgot that I even made a pinky promise with them because <laughs> it was so late in the night and I don't understand why I stayed so late in the night. Um, to this day, only pinky promise I've ever broken for everyone out there. Like I, I do take my pinky promise seriously. Um, I think honestly, I made that pinky promise just because I was like, this is so late. I want to go home. I want to sleep. 
like, yeah, I could have just left and gone home and didn't have to stay the whole time and watch them, like, try to figure out a resolution. Um, but in the moment, like, in that moment, I was like, how can I get these people to trust me that, like, I will feel safe um, and not get voted off and, like, still get my sleep? So that's when I made the pinky promise. Um, and then also, I think... That challenge scared me because in the hallway, after Dale and I got out, we were like walking the hallways, like waiting and we were talking and Dale brought up to me, maybe he was also really tired and wanted to find a way out. He was like, we should vote out Jackson this week if he doesn't like, if he doesn't win. And that like scared me. Cause I was like, mm -hmm. oh, Jackson the final three. Dale said that and I was like, wait, I was like, cool. like, that just like put me in shock. So I think that's what led me to be like, this idea with the pinky promise. Because I was like, I need time to like, figure out what I actually want to do. So I think that like, that definitely was how that pinky promise came about. Do you do you regret breaking the pinky promise? Is no. that do you does that keep you up at night? That that is the one you didn't <laughs> keep? Um, don't regret br breaking the pinky promise. Um, I have come to a new rule that I will not break any pinky promises that I shake hands on as well, too. Ooh, so there's, there's double Ooh. to it. So we just yep, add yep. more layers. I like it. I like it. it. So when you return, when I mean, you're 30 years old, you can, you'll, you'll have a pinky promise and the handshake. And the and handshake. Then, and the handshake. Then they won't see it coming, you know, because yeah. they'll know like, oh, well, Ivy will never break a pinky promise and handshake. That is yes. true. That is true. But well, by then there'll be like a third layer to it. Like you also have to like high five is the real <laughs> secret. Just make a whole yeah. handshake out of the thing. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so yeah, I guess like you I mean looking at that final week in the game, I mean it seemed like you had a very you definitely had a clear path and a clear pan, plan to like getting to the end. And I feel like your alliance with Nate, like you definitely were you were also able to save Nate. Like getting yeah. Nate to final seven, I think was like really it was not a coincidence that he was the last on the rotate standing right um, no yeah. there were i like i think another thing is like nate and i only filmed talking to each other twice but like that whole time nate and i would talk to each other like three times a day like texting each other calling each other um there was i think it was the second tribal council or like the third or something where Nate's name was really being thrown out. And I think it was when Ben was voted out. Yeah. And we, Nate and I literally would spend hours talking to each other, trying to figure out a plan, like trying to figure out what would happen. Um, many times, I never was stressed when I would go to tribal council, but every tribal council Nate went to, I would get some <laughs> stress because I was like, I invested so much time in Nate going to the end with me that like, if he goes, I'm like, who, like, it completely would mess up my mind on, like, who mm -hmm. I have to continue this path with. So it was definitely not a coincidence. Me joining the merge team was not a coincidence. I was like, if we're both on the same team, it's going to be easier to, like, keep each other safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, wait, yeah, that's something I was, we were talking about this once, we were curious. So, like, let's say that, remember that, mer that like, swap tribe that you guys were on with, like, Nate and Kat and Shannon and Megan? Yeah. So what would have happened if you guys would have lost one of the challenges? Um, so you're supposed to lose the one, and you guys, yeah, you're supposed we to throw it, and you didn't. Yeah, they totally threw the puzzle. Yeah, thank you to the puzzler. <laughs> um, watching that back and literally seeing my face as Nate literally finished it, like, my jaw dropped, and, like, literally seeing that happen, I, like, I knew Nate was good at puzzles. I didn't know he was that good at puzzles. <laughs> And so it literally freaked me out because we were supposed to throw it. And if we had lost, I think definitely Megan would have gone out then. Not um, me. Oh, wait, I forgot you were still in there. Oh, yeah. Jackie would have definitely gone yeah. out there, 100%. <laughs> yeah, it would have been Jack. Yeah, because that was a thing where I was curious. Like, it seemed like Shannon, like Jack, but like you really – but the rest of the tribe really wanted Jack out and you obviously mm -hmm. were going to protect Nate. Like, I'm curious, like, like, I mean, at that point, I'm, I'm curious, like, would Jack, do you think you really would have pushed for Nate to go or like, would, would you have pushed for Kat and do something completely different? Like, yeah, I think it would have been hard because I think 
I had like a feeling you two were close. I don't think I realized like how close you were, like that you were like completely like ride or die. I feel like I probably, I don't know. It's really hard to say. I probably would have been dumb and tried to push for Nate and then just completely get stonewall and get voted out. But yeah, I don't know. And I think in that situation, I would, cause I had a strong belief Jack and Matt were in alliance together. Mm -hmm. So I think I would have really pushed that. I was like, there's mm -hmm. no way they're not working together. So I think that would have been my push to get Jack out. Yeah. yeah. Cause it seemed like, yeah, you guys were never really on the same page during the game. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even think I talked to Jack. Yeah, what? I don't know why we didn't. I think I was just like, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I was just like really scared of like talking to too many people and like getting my threat level up even higher. I mean, it's just like such a dumb thing. And I think I was just knew that you and Nate were close and I mean Nate were already feuding. I don't know. I mean, you and I Nate were really like, gunning for each other every single time. Yeah. So I guess it makes sense that like. That is true. It would it make, yeah. I feel like at that point it was known that Nate and I were like talking mm -hmm. to each other for sure. Yeah. Well, hey, Survivor season, Survivor Michigan season 20, you guys can, Jack can come back for the third time. Ivy comes back for the second time. And you guys can be the alliance that no one sees coming. Yeah, each true. department hires me as like a professor and like I'm the first professor. <laughs> the <place laughs> player. Yeah. When, when they start, you'll like join the music school and be like, uh, you know, they'll hire you as a professor for your indie heads like knowledge. <laughs> yeah. Ivy will, yeah, it will be a doctor by that time. Like you guys, you guys will be running that game easy. You'll you'll be the Nate of uh, yeah. season twenty. Ivy will be the Dale. Oh my god! You know, be, Ivy will be the Ivy. It'll be a time. It'll be a time. It'll be time. All it says knows Jack, and I think yeah. <laughs> for my byline. <laughs> so I guess like looking at that week that you were voted off, like I mean, I, I think I feel like. If you hadn't told Jackson about, did you consider not telling Jackson about the plan? I know obviously there's this whole thing where Shannon was like, Ivy, don't tell Jackson. We already have four votes. But like, and I know there's a part of you that also you wanted to bring him to the end. Like, do you regret telling Jackson about the plan? Uh, or do you think that, or do you think that he made the wrong move I and think, that you did the right move? I think he made the wrong move and I made the right move. Cause I remember like when I talked to Jackson, I told Jackson like Dale was trying to vote him out. And like at that point, I felt like Dale and I were close and I had a feeling like Dale was willing to take me, to, like Dale would take me to his final three. Mm -hmm. And when the moment he said, vote out Jackson, I knew like Jackson and Matt were, were not going to final three with him. So I was like this, like, I think it, I really, I told Jackson, I've told Jackson multiple times. I think it was a bad move on his part to not join in on that vote. Um, especially when he knew his name was like being thrown out there to get voted out. I guess mm. it depends like what was going on in his mind. Like, did Jackson really think he could beat Dale? Um, that's what I always wonder. I also, everyone else, I was like, did you really think he could beat Dale? Like, do you think he can beat Dale? Cause truly like Dale, he was just too good. He was too good at the game. Dale told us he had applied to actual survivor and had gone through very far in like the interview rounds. Also, he has like two credits, less than two credits. Like he was mm -hmm. investing yeah. a lot of time into this. So and like he was like fifty years old. Literally. <laughs> yeah. And his wife wasn't complaining. That was like a big <laughs> thing that I always wondered. And when I met Dale's wife, I like asked her about it. I was like, hot why do you let him do this? Like, why, why? does he why? Play? <laughs> you're like 30 years old <laughs> playing with kids? Um, so I was like, like anything, I was like, how much time you put into something is what you get out. Also, Nate and I did an extensive background check on everyone for my for, um especially Dale. And looking at Dale's past um like activities. He is very good at what he does, especially when he puts his mind to it. Um, mm -hmm. So that was just like, he got to go. He had he has an engineering degree and he was going to Ross School of Business. Like that was a yeah. 
double whammy. I was like, there's no way I can overthink this man. I'm struggling <laughs> to get my undergraduate degree and he's already in a master's, like mm -hmm. how? So yeah. I think it was really like, I mean, it's funny because the audit, I mean, obviously none of you guys knew about Dale's idols at the time. No. Um, so I understand like, but I feel like the audience is constantly like, why are these people not taking a shot at Dale? Why aren't they doing something about it? And like, I feel like you were the first person in the game to really be like, wow, Dale's a really big threat. We need yeah. to make a move on Dale. Yeah. Also, I didn't realize how big of a threat he was until he brought up Jackson's name. Cause I was mm -hmm. like, oh, this guy doesn't care. Yeah, he'll do anything. Takes yeah. people down. And I knew Jackson and Dale were close. Mm -hmm. um, so I was like, he doesn't care who he takes down. So I was like, we got to flip the script on him and yeah. get him out. See, I think the tough thing was that, I mean, you've seen like Jackson's confessionals and stuff, that at the time when you told him about the plan to vote off Dale, and then you were like, yeah, and I want to get Shannon out next, like me and you can go to the finals. I think that he didn't believe you. Like he thought that like, I'm such a big threat. No one will ever take me to the finals. Mm -hmm. I'd be just going to take me out right after Dale. Like, I think he was thinking, oh, I need Dale in as a shield because Ivy's lying to me. If he's going to go after Dale, then she's going to go after me next. Because in yeah. his mind, he's like, oh, I'm such a big threat. No one will take me to the finals. Mm -hmm. So obviously, Ivy, Ivy's going to take me out next. I could, I definitely could see that. Watching it back and like seeing his clips of him talking, I like, I was like, he looks paranoid. Like he looks kind of scared about everything. So I can, I, I definitely see it. And I think Dale once told me, he's like, I think people are using me as a shield. And I think that got into my head. Cause once again, I'm like, I don't want people to think I'm just using them. Cause I do respect people. So mm -hmm. I was like, I'm, I'm not going to use Dale as a shield. Um, I guess Jackson, he's a lawyer. It makes sense that he can just use people as shields. Seems on brand with the snake behavior. Um, but I, I literally watching it back, I was like kind of excited that I got him scared. Like I was like, wow, that was a win. Yeah. So I guess like um, looking at your game and how it all played out, like do you have any regrets at all? No, I don't have any regrets. I think if anyone were to watch Survivor and like look at it like who is Ivy? What type of person is she? I think they'd get a really good depiction. Um, I'm loyal. Clearly went all the way to the end with Nate. Got voted out before mm -hmm. him. Um, very much root for like root for the people I stick with. Um, determined. Cause I really was like, we can get Dale out. Mm -hmm. Um yeah. I think they definitely can see that. I will say the one time when Jackson says that I have no morals, um, I would like to rebuttal that by saying sometimes I can be mean um, and I don't realize how mean I can be, but we're working on it. So, yeah. Yeah. Rebuttal to the lawyer. Mm -hmm. Honestly, like, I think objection. it's funny. also objection. Honestly, like, funny that Jackson of all people be like, wow, Ivy with no morals. I can't believe mm -hmm. she would do such a thing. I think he followed up with like, you know, I would do the exact same thing. If yeah, I yeah, yeah. <laughs> Literally, I, I would, I would think he would, but yeah. But yeah, no, I know they were giving you a little bit of flack for like, wow, you're going after Dale when his grandma died. But it's like, I mean, I don't know. I feel like at the same time, it's like, you're not going to just give someone immunity and not vote for them just because like, because of something that happened outside the game. It's like, yeah. of course, like, I, I think that everyone kind of recognizes like, I, I wouldn't say that may as that's it, it's like you're playing a game. I don't know. I personally it was like I feel like that's a little a, kind of ridiculous to get mad at you about yeah. that. I like it's only bad for a second. And then yeah. by the end of the game, I was like, no, I don't feel bad. Like it's one thing if like that's like the only excuse you have for going out for him this week. Like say if you weren't voting him at all and they're like, oh ha, ha no, he was not gonna have time to fight back. It's this is the perfect time. You know, it's yeah. like you were already planning on doing this anyways. And it's yeah. not like you just like yeah well possibly throw your stuff away and like do something that's worse for you i don't yeah i, I think it's i think it's an ethical thing to do i think it's fun it's, not, it's, it's, a, like, game. Mm -hmm, it's a game it's not, it's not that serious yeah. i don't think yeah and by that point too yeah because you've been tossing out dale's name like at least on your confessionals for like weeks by that point mm -hmm. like i think the previous week you're like tokidoki's not gonna last forever like 
you so know, have to go. It's a matter of time. Yeah. That one where it's like cutting back and forth, you're like, Dale's such a big threat. And it shows Dale, and he's like, I can't survive without my wife. Like, I'm eating rice out of a fork. <laughs> that was literally watching that. I think I, like, Dale and I have been like texting each other back and forth pretty much the whole season. And I watched that and I texted Dale, I was like, this is the funniest thing I've ever seen. Because clearly I'm talking about how big of a threat you are. And then you're showing up as like a person that doesn't even have like basic necessities, like struggling to live. <laughs> That was so funny. I love that. Yeah, you had such great confessionals. Oh, man. I th like, looking back, I'm like, wow, I kind of, like, miss just, like, picking up the camera and just talking. Mm -hmm. I remember there was, like, one confessional. I, someone told me, like, Ivy, I think you have the idol. And I was like, I haven't even searched for the idol. And they're like, are you sure about it? And I was like, okay, I guess now I have to go look for it. And it's, like, me on North Campus, like, right after work or, like, after piano lessons. And I was like, oh, I guess I'm here. And I have like my phone, I'm like, this is so pointless. I know someone else has the idol. It's not me, but I guess I have to do this. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. It. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I was gonna say, like, is you know, kind of the last wrapping things up here, like were there any like kind of like fun moments, like things that happened throughout the season that just like didn't make the edit? Like anything you remember that you're like Yeah, you wanted to bring up? Um I think the best, like the only thing, like looking back, the only confessional that I was like has to make the edit was me at Mardi Gras. Like, oh, I have to film this. And my friends got like super excited because I've been talking about Survivor Michigan for yes. such a long time mm -hmm. that they're like, okay, Ivy, we're going to use like your digital camera, like fancy camera to record this. And like one of my friends was like, is a film major and he was in SAC. So he like, produced the whole like confessional and the whole time I was like blackout gone and I was like, <laughs> okay I'm just gonna talk really animatedly <laughs> and hope there's something good out there. Um never watched any of my confessionals back. So like re seeing that and I was like oh wow I really <laughs> that. Mardi Gras Ivy was so funny. I love too yeah. that it was like literally in the title sequence like every week it's like yeah. that's, that's so perfect. It was a it was a fun time. Like that was like right after like going out seeing parades. Like everyone is tired, but I was like, hey, let's film a confessional. Um, I really like seeing everyone's spring break confessional because it was just like iconic. Like I think it depicted mm -hmm. everyone like very well. Love that. Cool. Well, um, yeah. I mean, any other final thoughts about the game or the experience? Um, Great time. Highly recommend everyone to play Survivor if they ever have the chance. You never know what's going to happen. Um, also, very much recommend everyone makes a Survivor bracket for the actual show because that's what got me into Survivor and like signing up for this. Um, it's always like Survivor, I think, is one of those shows that like you get the drama, but like can, it's like a show where you can actually see yourself being mm -hmm. in so great time will forever cherish this time of my life will forever tell people about it and yeah oh yeah that's awesome yeah i feel the same way <laughs> oh. yeah you're such a great character ivy so glad you played this season and glad that you like spice things up like especially like near the end like you you made the chaos you made the big move made the chaotic move blew mm -hmm. up toki doki like you're a great addition to the season, and um, yeah, really, really glad you were you were there. Glad to be a part of it. Glad to like see the news, like hear about the new seasons coming out, mm -hmm. getting to know the people. Great time. Absolutely. All right, it's been great talking. Yeah, great catching up, Ivy. Talk to y'all later then. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. All righty, peace out. See you in season twenty, right? Season 20, 30 year old Ivy. Let's go. All right. All right. Bye. Let's just knock out this, knock out the eulogy. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, if we're ever, like, God forbid, at these funerals, we're going to be pros at the eulogy. Pros pros the eulogy. Yeah. Well, whichever one of us <laughs> dies first is going to have such a good <laughs> eulogy. Yeah. Jack was a great character. <laughs> <laughs> right.
So what is where does Sarah rank for people who died on June 14th? <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> like if you were to run her life multiple times, yeah. she have made it further. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's not her fault she's blindsided by that bus, you know? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you have to think a hundred times. She's going to miss that bus a few times. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> anyway, you being a few of these, yeah. Did you? Let's... <laughs> Was, I guess we, sh we should eulogize uh, good old Ivy. Talk about her game. I guess. Ivy, the green wigged queen. Mm -hmm. Queen of Mardi Gras. Honestly, I loved her confessionals because she always, like, like, she's really good at speaking. Mm -hmm. I feel like she's good at public speaking. Yeah. I oh, yeah. That's the vibe I get. I feel like she like didn't film enough. Like I, she said, like when we were just talking to her, like you know she had, had talked a lot more with Nate, and like she only filmed like twice and stuff. Like I feel like, you know, there's so many people on this path, kind of like we were talking about earlier, who just have like hours and hours of footage. Like I do wish that maybe Ivy had a little bit more like, stuff to record because all the stuff that we did see, like not that it, like she didn't record anything, like, we still got a good amount of Ivy on the screen. It's not going wrong, but like I don't know, like she's she was really fun to watch for sure. I agree. I wish that I, I agree. Same sentiment. Like, I I wish she had filmed more because everything we did get to see was incredible. Like Ivy's great speaker, great on camera. Um, I feel like Ivy had. I feel like Ivy was really smart too with mm -hmm. her game. Like super smart. I feel like people probably don't give her enough credit for her game plan. I think she had a game plan from the very beginning, and like from the very beginning, she wanted to go with the end with Nate. Mm -hmm. And I feel like she was very subtly, but like very steadily, like going to be, towards that strategy. Like she protected Nate for so many tribals, like got to the final seven. And she, I feel like she, her timing on making a move on Dale was like really good timing. Like I feel like she did a yeah. lot of things right. Yeah. One yeah. of my favorite confessionals of hers was the one where she's like, a few of us have got to go. <laughs> like a few of us have got to go. <laughs> and I love hearing that she like, psychoanalyzed like everybody in the cast <laughs> yeah, yeah that's hilarious like, and like, honestly all her confessionals with Nate killed me mm, when she was yes. like yeah, you really have to buy but not further <laughs> stuff like that yeah I wish we got like, exactly I wish we got more of their interactions so funny. On, actually yeah, on camera yeah. yeah but yeah I, I feel like Ivy played a really good game honestly her social game was good too like mm -hmm. within Tokidoki I feel like she had a good relationship with everyone she was yeah, she's kind of like yeah, she was in the in-group, like the final four with Dale, Jackson, and Shannon. She also had her side thing with Nate. And like, and she hadn't gotten one vote up until she was voted off. Like, and no one really saw Ivy as like a big threat, even though I do think if she made it, I don't, I don't it's, it's questionable whether she would be, like if he was with Jackson and, and Nate, I don't know if she would have beat Jackson. Mm -hmm. But I feel like she could have a good pitch, especially if she's the one that led the charge on voting yeah. off Dale. Um, it's like, I don't know, I feel like she had a good game plan. I just think that telling Jackson was something she didn't have to do. Mm -hmm. Or even though, even, you know, whether or not you want to blame Jackson and maybe say that Jackson made the wrong choice, or I feel like she didn't need it. She shouldn't have had Jackson in her final three in the first place. Yeah. It should have been Cat. Yeah, I feel like she just had the wrong read on Jackson. Like, I feel like she had, I like, yeah. and like, she even said, like, just now that like, she knew she, she was a snake and everything. I just feel like she thought that. Like, I don't know, that he trusted her more than he did, and, you know, that he actually, that she actually, like, wanted to go to the end with him, like, kind of like what we were talking about, like, he wanted to get rid of her. Like, just for whatever reason, I feel like she had good reads on other people, and just, like, didn't really fully see, like, how her and Jackson's relationship was. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really think this is just, I think that if she hadn't told Jackson, and Dale goes home at, at this tribal council. Like, mm -hmm. I think she's sitting in a really good spot. She's in a awesome spot. Yeah. Like, I think Jackson and Shannon are probably going for each other at that point. Mm -hmm. And like, Ivy's kind of in the middle, and she also has Nate. Like, I feel like that was really her read on Jackson. Like, was her biggest mistake. Yeah. But 
As soon as it comes down to just one one small mistake, that can yeah. take you out. Uh, uh, as soon as it's all of this. Just one extra person, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's math for you. If you have four out of seven, you don't need five out of seven. Don't need five, yeah. Yep. It's like a, it's like reverse red Culpepper strategy. <laughs> four, four into seven. Four into seven. Is, is. Yeah. Yeah, it's enough. Um, so yeah, great player, great presence. Just made a mistake. Had a great timing. A lot of great things I loved about her game. Just sometimes that mistake will take you out. Mm -hmm. So, right. shall we rank her in the seventh place rankings? Let's do it. This this is a pretty stacked rankings. Not gonna lie. I feel like Ooh. we say that literally every time now because we do. Wait a minute. Cooper, right, Maggie, sweet. and Austin. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I remember yeah. talking with this last time. Yeah, we did. This is just going to keep getting harder every time, especially because we're going to have more and more people. Like this is going to be a tough one. And if you make it this far, you're going to you're you're a pretty good player probably. Yeah. Mhm. Mm yep. Huh. So Ivy versus Austin. Um They had very different games. They were very, very they different. Did not, they yeah. did not play similar at all. Mm -hmm. Like, Austin was extremely loyal. <laughs> Whereas Sabu Ivy, Sabu. Yeah. Well, also, I, th I guess Ivy was very loyal to Nate, but, like, Austin was loyal to, like, everyone in his alliance. Mm hmm True. Austin was Sabu Sabu strong. Sabu Sabu Ivy was strong. not. Was. Yeah, Ivy... But very much kind of like accidentally, you know, um, Tokidoki Tokyo. strong. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she was more loyal to Nate than she was to anyone from Tokidoki. Yeah. I feel like um, Austin, I feel like Ivy's social game was a little bit better than Austin's social game. Mm -hmm. Like, because Austin kind of made it clear to the rest of the people like Dylan. Remember that one? I just like keep thinking of that one meeting between Dylan and Austin, like right around when he was voted off, where Austin was like, Dylan's like, so like, you know, who do you want to work with? But Austin's like, yeah, you know, I really like my alliance with like Will and Eliza and Devin. And then Dylan was like, oh, okay. So like, you don't want to work with me then. Like, I think, I don't know. Yeah. I often didn't, I don't think Austin is making any singular mistake as bad as Ivy's was with Jackson. Yeah. Austin had also kind of like tanked his social game, I think, by the time he was voted off to where he didn't really have much power anymore. I do feel like Ivy, you know, even though she had a really good connection with Nate, I feel like she could have done better at making really close connections with like other people. And like, I feel like none of the other El Norte people in the merge ever really met up or got that close um with ivy like, i don't know i feel like austin at least put in a little bit i don't know i think austin did a lot i i mean i there's a lot of things i love about austin's game mm -hmm. i love austin the thing that i think i'm thinking of is that i mean that's true i feel like ivy didn't make as many social bonds as austin did because austin actually did like i feel like he had a decent relationship with the other people but yeah. i'm thinking about if ivy had survived to the final six she had a clear path to the end that I think she mm -hmm. could have like executed in one. But if Austin made it to the final six, I'm not sure if he actually had a path to the end. Yeah. Or if I he could have won. I agree with that. Yeah, so what about Maggie versus Ivy? Um I See, think Maggie's more strategic. And I feel like what Maggie's also more social. I don't know. Yeah. Like, Ivy had a good, solid social game, don't get me wrong, but I just feel like, I keep like just saying this again, but like I feel like she, she had a really good connection with Nate, and then like most of the other people I feel like didn't super, she didn't seem like super tight with, whereas Maggie was able to make like super close connections with a few different people, you know? Mm -hmm. And at yeah. different times. Maggie also found an idol and like, mm -hmm. you played it correctly to save herself. Like she was a big part of that Kevin blindside. Mm -hmm. 
She won immunity at the merge. I feel like Matt, I mean, Maggie obviously made some mistakes too and was kind of chaotic, but like, I respect that Maggie was able to pull off. Ivy had one big move that she was trying to pull off and she like didn't quite execute it. I mean, she did. I feel like saving Nate every week was like a lot of like small minor moves that were really good. But like, I feel like Maggie. Yeah, I feel like Maggie did, like you were saying, had a better social game and also like pulled off more moves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, I think Maggie's a bit more sneaky. Like, Maggie, to me, is more, like, like thinks through all of that possibilities more. Um, sometimes a little And maybe much, it's just, but... honestly, maybe yeah. just because I played with her, so I, like, know how the meetings went, mm -hmm. that might be part of it. But, yeah. Yeah. It's tough because I feel like both of them, at times, had bad reads on the game. Or, like, like Maggie and Ivy, at, at certain points, had, like, reads that just weren't correct. Mm -hmm. But also both of them had really good reads sometimes too. I feel like in some ways it's kind of interesting that we're a little bit similar characters. And like Ivy telling Jackson about the plan reminds me of Maggie telling mm -hmm. Sarah about the plan. Um, yeah, but I feel like I feel like Ivy was more like it was Ivy's choice to tell Jackson and I don't think she like thought much about it. Whereas Maggie, I think really hesitated and like only told me after we had talked for a little bit and like she was really trying to pry info out to see if i was like yeah into it you know yeah know. and i think that it was also like telling you about the plan about off jack is more forgivable than ivy telling jack because jackson and dale were like almost like number ones like jackson mm -hmm. was not gonna vote off dale versus you did want to vote off jack it, you just kind of like decided yeah. to make a different move Right, exactly. Like, I feel like I feel like the move to tell Jackson is a little bit of a is like a worse move. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. I'm I'm fine putting Ivy behind Maggie. Yeah, above Austin, but behind Maggie. I think that I think, I think that's a good do spot. That. Yeah. Yeah. Let's lock it in. I mean, those are, those are four icons for sure. Mm -hmm. They definitely are. Yep. So. Seventh place rankings locked in. Cooper number one, Maggie number two, Ivy number three, and Austin is number four. Woo. Woo. With that, two episodes wow. left. And the final six. How is there already two episodes left? Final That's six. That's insane. And you I know feel that like it means. just started. Final six, so it's going to be the best player in the season and the coolest and the funniest <laughs> and the sweetest. <laughs> yep. Yeah, let's, we're going to get to see if they're going to uh, pass Jack or stay behind Jack. It's going to be mm -hmm. quite the debate. Quite the debate. Love it. Ranking Jack. We're going to be ranking Jack the second time this season. That's fun. True. I don't know. I don't know, Sam. Don't even worry about it. I'm going to be I'm gonna be about this person still. So. Oh, don't even worry about it. <laughs> worry about it. I'm gonna take your ranking and okay. <laughs> <laughs> you you guys will understand what we're talking about in another episode. Yeah, don't worry. Yeah, don't worry about it. Don't even, don't even worry, don't about, even worry it. about it. Don't worry about it. All right. Well, it's been fun talking with you guys as always. Mm -hmm. And yeah. thanks for listening. KYTL fans, love y'all. <laughs> love y'all. See you next week. Can we make merch. <laughs> oh yes one day one day we definitely will have to make some merch and we'll definitely sell at least five of them it'll be it'll be amazing it'll be like us three yeah <laughs> like, yes us three yeah. and joe austin, and paul for sure austin, and, and austin. joe and paul and our, aaron's our mom shelly sickery yes. shout out to shelly yes, sickery yes. shouts out yep. to everybody and and Lyoko and all the other people that have commented and matthew mm -hmm. israel frankly matthew israel of course there we go. Matthew you know, didn't. No, Matthew the... didn't make the merch, I think. Yeah. He didn't he didn't yeah. make the merch. I think he made the merch at least once. Yeah. Yeah. But, but you know, you know, Matthew you already said the merch multiple times. No more merch jokes, right? Isn't yeah. that what he said? No more merch jokes. Do you remember him saying that, Sarah? I do remember Did that. Like Did maybe, maybe that? like in the back of my head, but it might have been a dream. Yeah. I don't think he actually true. said it. 
Who said that? Who said that?